We're going to spend a little bit of time looking at uh, the distinction in Fitch between three types of logical consequence. They are anacon, ethocon, and totcon. The middle consequence is not going to be as clear to you now as it will be by the time we're uh, done with the course, but that's because ethocon has to do with some symbolization that we haven't yet learned. Uh, but hold on to that, we'll come back to it in a moment. First, let's take a look at this argument. We've got the following premises. A is a tet, a cube, or a dodec. It's not the case that A is a dodec. It is the case that A is a tet, therefore A is not a cube. Now, given what you know about Tarski's world, you know that these three possibilities, A being a tet, a cube, or a dodec, exhaust the type of shape that can obtain. So these three are exclusive and, uh, or sorry, they're exhaustive, right? Um, there are no other shapes that could obtain. In addition, because we understand the meaning of a tetrahedron, the meaning of cube, the meaning of dodecahedron, we understand that these are exclusive of each other. In other words, A can't be both a tet and a dodec, for example. So we understand when we're reading the sentence that the or is exclusive. But don't forget in truth functional logic, that is the Boolean uh, logic we've been looking at, the or is not exclusive, it's inclusive. In other words, a disjunction is true when at least one of the disjuncts is true, and it could be uh, both, or in the case of this sentence, it could be uh, three of the elements are true. So there's uh, 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 just a reminder here that the truth table does not understand or the truth table does not take into account the uh, exhaustiveness and exclusivity of the sentence that's asserted here in uh, the first premise. In addition, uh, and, and related to this, uh, when you have the uh, sentence, it's not the case that A is a dodec, you certainly do have uh, an, uh, a truth functional inference that you can make, namely that if A is not a dodec, then A is either a tet or a cube. Uh, but when we look at the third premise, A is a tet, then by way of what we understand about Tarski's world, the inference A is not a cube must follow. But that's not the case in terms of truth functionality, right? We know that just because A is a tet on the truth functional side of things, that doesn't tell us anything about whether or not it must be a cube. So let's uh, now take a look at uh, the notion of consequence. Anacon is that mechanism in Fitch that represents uh, what you and I would call a logical consequence or a valid argument. In other words, if we choose anacon as our justification for this inference, we're basically saying that not cube A is a logical consequence of the three premises. Another way of saying it is that just by analyzing these three sentences in terms of not strictly truth functionality, uh, but also in terms of what we understand about the restrictions of Tarski's world and what we understand about the meanings of these uh, atomic sentences, we get the inference, A is not a cube. We can say, however, that a truth table would not yield the necessary inference. In other words, now, and this, remember, does not mean that the argument is not valid. The argument is valid, but the truth table is not the test for it. So to say that the sentence not cube A is a tautological consequence of these three sentences is to misapply uh, the truth table considerations. What about a first order consequence? 
why is it the case that this is also not a first order consequent uh, of the three sentences? In other words, why is it the case that A is not a cube is not a first order consequence of these sentences uh, above it? Well, because right now, the way that we understand our first order language is as follows. First, take a look at page uh, 115. We're told that totcon, focon, and anacon are, quote, three increasingly strong methods that Fitch uses to test for logical consequence. In other words, totcon, focon, and anacon are testing methods that ask effectively specific questions about the type of validity that uh, we're looking at. Now let's look at a definition. On page 116, we're told that FOCON, which stands for first order consequence, pays attention to the truth functional connectives, the quantifiers, and the identity predicate when it checks for consequence. So if we go back to our example, we see that we have truth functional connectives, but we don't have any sentence involving the identity symbol, and we don't have any sentence involving quantifiers. We haven't yet studied those, so that's, there's no surprise there. So what we see then is that at this point, that is with this specific example, we're looking at a sentence it's not the case that A is a cube, in terms of truth functional and first order considerations. And there, we don't have consequence. But the argument itself is still valid. And that is because, as I mentioned before, it is the term, their meanings, that is, and their relation that determine the consequence. Okay, let's take a look. Well, actually, let me go back here. So we've got Anacon. Now we've got an argument that does not involve any connectives, but does involve the identity symbol. So uh, it doesn't take much to see that B is a tet follows necessarily from the premises a is a tet and A is identical to B. Because we understand what the identity symbol represents, the identity symbol represents the fact that uh, two objects that have identical properties are in fact indiscernible. So that when we say A is identical to B, we're saying that A and B are the same object. We know that the identity symbol is not truth functional. In other words, the principle of identity is not the result of truth functionality. The identity symbol is not a connective that operates on atomic sentences or operates on uh, otherwise compound sentences. When we say that the conclusion follows, we're not then saying that the conclusion is a tautological consequence. It is, however, a first order consequence. And as a first order consequence, it's also more broadly an analytical consequence. So let me go back to this uh, second um, mechanism. Lastly, the narrowest uh, uh, version of validity or the narrowest version of logical consequence is TOTCON. So let's take a look first at our premises. We're told that A is small, medium, or large. We're told that it's not the case that A is small, and it's not the case that A is medium. Let's take uh, two inferences in turn. Since A is small, medium, or large, and A is not small, it follows by way of TOTCON that A is either therefore medium or large. Remember uh, from a previous video that What's happening with uh, the TOTCON mechanism, similarly to the FOCON mechanism, and that's why you have these little glasses, uh, this, sorry, you have this um, uh, glasses icon, is that what we're looking at when we say TOTCON is just what the connectives tell us follows from a set of sentences. 
right? So notice when I hit the glasses icon, the uh, semantics, that is the meanings of the terms, are blocked out. All we're looking at is how this negation rejects one of the terms and how because the rejection is of a uh, one side of a disjunction, the other side of the disjunction drops down so that we're left with uh, the second disjunction. So the inference is a tautological consequence. It's a truth table consequence, nothing else. Now we're told the second inference is that A is large, and that's because if it's the case that A is not medium, and it's also the case that A is either medium or large, what's left is that A is large. Again, we've got a tot con. Now, what if I say that we're dealing with two first order consequence? We get two check marks. Why is that? Well, remember, if a sentence is a tautological consequence of another or others, it's also a first order consequence and it's also an analytical consequence. Right, so we get uh, a, an increasingly uh, broad notion of validity. So a tot con is going to be an FO con and also an anacon. But we've already seen that the converse is not the case. Just because you have an FO con, that does not mean that you have a tot con. And just because you have an anacon, that does not mean that you have an FO con, does not mean that you have a tot con. When, however, you have a tot con, you also have an anacon, and you also have an FO con, right? So the directionality uh, is, is one way from tot con through FO con up to anacon, from FO con up to anacon, not the converse. So just to uh, review, we want to understand that uh, what Fitch is doing when we ask it to tell us whether or not we've got an anacon inference, whether or not we've got an FO con inference, whether or not we've got a tot con inference, is we're asking Fitch to uh, run effectively a background check, right? So in the case of anacon, we're looking for uh, specifically with the version of the system that we're learning, we're looking for um, Tarski's world consequences. We're looking for, as we'll see when we get to uh, chapter 13, uh, consequences that involve uh, quantifiers, but for right now, consequences that involve uh, the identity symbol uh, and maybe, and also where relevant uh, uh, connectives. And then lastly, consequences that uh, strictly involve connectives. So what we get is a really robust way of thinking about validity, right? When an argument is valid, that validity is not undermined, let's say in the case of an anacon versus a totcon, the validity of this argument is not invalidated uh, by truth table considerations, Instead, we understand that uh, truth table considerations can't apply, right? So uh, we do get a really nice uh, comprehensive way of thinking about validity when we use the uh, three mechanisms in Fitch, anacon, FOCon, and TOTCon. Now that you've had some experience with the concept of validity and you have um, worked that concept in Tarski's world, and now you've also worked it in the truth table, I think that this discussion on page 116 um, is more illuminating for you. In other words, when you think about the, uh, the ways that we can talk about validity, it makes sense to say that 
FOCON is stronger than uh, TOTCON, right? In the sense that any consequence in, uh, that TOTCON recognizes as valid is also valid uh, as an FOCON. Um, we also see that Anacon is even stronger than both uh, TOTCON and FOCON. And I've talked about it in terms of a uh, breadth, right? Anacon is uh, the notion of consequence that recognizes validity in more comprehensive terms than either TOTCON or FOCON. I hope that this focus on the difference between TOTCON, FOCON, and ANACON in Fitch is helpful to you. And then I hope that once you work through proofs in chapter 13 and you come back to this uh, set of distinctions, your understanding will be even more robust. We can sum things up by saying, though all arguments that are valid are valid for the same general reason, that is, they're valid because you cannot make the conclusion false if the premises are true. It's not the case that they're valid in the same way.